Sometimes the sun sets on even the brightest stars, and other times there are some complex factors that can spell the end for even the most gifted actors. Taylor Lautner rose to fame at just 16 years old, when he captured millions of fans for his roles as Jacob Black in The Twilight Saga. However, his journey in the film industry took an unexpected turn that left fans wondering why he wasn't cast by Hollywood anymore. A big reason for his disappearance from the big screen was that his rise in Hollywood wasn't just defined by his acting skills, but also for his physique, which played a significant role in propelling him to stardom, but proved to be a double-edged sword that would later play a role in his downfall. It's basically getting in the gym every single day, I basically kick myself. At the peak of his fame, Lautner revealed that he didn't go to malls, grocery stores, or the movies because he couldn't move without people coming up to him to take pictures and ask questions. After the success of Twilight, Taylor sought to establish himself as a leading man beyond the werewolf character that made him famous. Unfortunately, the transition wasn't seamless. His post-Twilight projects received mixed reviews, and the box office numbers didn't quite match the blockbuster success of the Vampire franchise. One of the projects that stood out is The Ridiculous Six, which somehow received a 0% rating in Rotten Tomatoes. Eventually, all the pressure to look a certain way started to catch up to him, which led Lautner to stop going to the gym, and the media was brutal in the reporting of his physical changes. And... I started noticing it for the first time when I just started rebelling against a gym. Yeah. I was forced to be in a gym multiple times a day, six days a week, you know, for those years. But then seeing it online where they put the side-by-sides of me shirtless in the ocean compared to me in Eclipse or whatever, and being like, wow, he's let it all go, I'm, I was like, Oh man, did I really let it all go? Luckily, things did turn around for Lautner, and he opened up about his struggles with fame and his appearance. Last year, he was cast for the Netflix movie Home Team, which wasn't a major success in the critics' department, but he enjoyed playing the role, and the audience seemed to enjoy it. Rupert Grint started acting in school plays and at his local theater group, and his first professional acting job was none other than in Harry Potter as Ron Weasley. The success of the franchise is estimated to have netted him over $70 million throughout the years. However, Grint tried other acting projects in some small movies, but critics were harsh when they saw him in different roles. This combined with the toll it took playing the same role in the Harry Potter franchise made him throw in the towel early and even became an ice cream salesman temporarily. Billy Zane is one of those actors that you might not immediately recognize the name, but has been in some of the biggest movies of all time, such as The Titanic, Zoolander, and Back to the Future. But his early success in a failed marriage showed to be a major setback in his career. One of the main problems for Billy Zane as an actor is that he can't escape his role in Titanic. Even decades later, every time he gets invited for an interview, the host seemed to only want to ask him about Titanic. The all-time villainous character, Cal Hockley from Titanic. How often do people come up to you and say... <laughs> it also didn't help for his career that he explored more independent films and projects that did not garner widespread attention. He explained this decision by saying in an interview, I married and divorced young and had to pay a lot of maintenance, so I took roles just for the money. From a very young age, Victoria Justice was booking incredibly successful shows like Zack and Cody, Zoe 101, and Victorious. But since her time at Victorious, she has failed to book any successful roles. It didn't help her case that immediately following the hit show Victorious, she tried segueing into music. But her debut album, which was very hyped up with a huge label behind it, only sold 30,000 copies. After this, Victoria and her label parted ways, and she decided to focus on acting. But her first big role for the movie Fun Size completely flopped, only making $11 million against their $14 million budget. From there, directors were hesitant to book her since it seemed that her big fan base didn't translate to box office numbers. So she was booked for smaller roles until she got a lead role in an MTV original called Eye Candy, which was canceled after only one season. Next one looks remarkably similar to Victoria Justice and has suffered a similar fate in the industry. Nina Dobrev shot to superstardom from The Vampire Diaries show, which ran for six seasons, but a mix of wrong projects and tabloid relationships impacted her Hollywood standing. Even though she's been constantly getting roles throughout the years, none of her recent movies have been well received by critics or managed to crack a profit, with Redeeming Love losing a whopping $20 million and Lucky Day that received a 9% rating in Rotten Tomatoes and grossed just $220,000 with a budget of around $8.8 .8 million. Once the rising star of Star Wars, Hayden Christensen faced a tumultuous journey in Hollywood. Criticized for his role as Anakin Skywalker, Christensen faced the aftermath of the prequel trilogy. The Golden Raspberry Awards, which is a parody award show for cinematic fails, labeled him worst supporting actor. And well, one could see why. Hold on. This whole operation was your idea. 
all because of your training. This was surprising considering he made some incredible performances prior to Star Wars, which left critics surprised when they saw the movie. Post-Star Wars, Christensen starred in a string of box office flops, like Awake and Jumper. It's worth noting that in 2022 he finally came to the big screen for the show Obi-Wan Kenobi, but there hasn't been news of a second season. From his comedic performances in sitcoms to dramatic roles in films, Terry Crews built a reputation as a versatile and talented actor. However, Terry Crews suffered from some unwanted advances by a powerful Hollywood agent. Sadly, when he came forward about the assault, his career was nearly destroyed. He takes his right hand and undermine and immediately squeezes, grabs my genitals and just, and I'm jumping back like, hey, hey, mm -hmm. whoa. And he go and he still, and he jumps back and he still does this tongue stuff and he's making weird noises, and then he comes back again and grabs me again. And I, I slap his hand away, push him back more forcefully. Despite him coming forward was obviously the right thing to do, and the public supported him, plus considering the agent has now been sued by his former wife for assault, he definitely did the right thing. But Terry Crews told BuzzFeed that his phone completely stopped ringing after shedding to light what happened and later testified in Congress about how he was pressured to drop the lawsuit against his abuser in order to remain in a movie franchise. Of retaliation was, uh, I've done three movies uh, called The Expendables with Sylvester Stallone. The producer of that film called my manager and asked him to drop my case in order, so, in order for me to be in the fourth installment of the movie. And if I didn't, there would be trouble. With Cameron Diaz having been cast in some of the biggest films of all time, such as Shrek and the Mask, it's a surprise to most people that she hasn't been cast in a movie since 2014. But she's the one that actually blacklisted Hollywood because she wanted to focus on being a mom and struggled to find a balance with work and family life. Looked around and it was just like so many parts of my life that I didn't have, I wasn't touching and that I wasn't managing. And it, I couldn't really manage it because it was so... It was so big, everything was so, you know, massive. But well, in 2023, she decided to give acting a second chance after a nine-year hiatus, but quickly announced she's retiring again after the 10-hour workdays were getting to her. In addition to some drama happening on set with Jamie Foxx and an executive producer while filming her new movie, a source told Page Six that Cameron Diaz hates the drama and confrontation that comes with working in Hollywood. So after this movie released, we're unlikely to see Cameron Diaz star on the big screen ever again. After Rachel Zegler was dropped from Paddington 3, supposedly due to the actor's strike, fans were quick to point out that multiple actors who were involved in the same association were not dropped from the movie. And then Zegler-led animated feature film was dropped by Apple TV. People were quick to speculate that this was because of the backlash from her bashing her own character Snow White and the studio that hired her. The original cartoon came out in 1937, yeah. and very evidently so. <laughs> I was scared of the original cartoon. I think I watched it once and then I never picked it up again. <laughs> I just mean that it's no longer 1937. <laughs> <laughs> we absolutely wrote a Snow White she's that is not going to be yeah. saved by the prince. She's going to stand there 18 hours in a dress of an iconic Disney princess. I deserve to be paid for every hour that it is streamed online. And well, maybe Zegler agreed with the critics because she did a complete 180 on the way she speaks about Disney in their entire catalog. Very dedicated group of people Fans, who yeah. love Disney cartoons. I'm one of them. Mm. You know, I, I love uh, the everything that the Disney company has put out yeah. in the past a million years, a hundred years this yeah. year. And so, uh, <laughs> from his powerful performance in Platoon to memorable roles in Wall Street and Major League, Charlie Sheen rose to fame with charisma and talent that left an indelible mark on Hollywood. But his career reached a new high with the sitcom Two and a Half Men, which made him the highest paid actor in television, breaking in $1.8 million per episode. Sadly, Charlie's addiction problem worsened throughout the sitcom, and even filming had to be halted while he was in rehab. Soon after, Charlie Sheen and show creator Chuck Lorre clashed with Charlie publicly demanding a raise to $3 million per episode and insulting the director and producer. This caused Sheen to get fired and kind of blackballed from Hollywood, to which he responded with a $100 million lawsuit against Warner Bros., which he settled for an undisclosed amount. Tobey Maguire, once the friendly neighborhood Spider-Man and a Hollywood sensation, experienced the highs of fame and the challenges that came with it. With the Spider-Man trilogy, he became a household name, but Spider-Man 3 was badly perceived by both fans and critics. It was so bad that Sony decided to bend the fourth movie. It also didn't help Maguire that he had a young face and a soft voice, which gave him a boyish charm perfectly suited for a role like Spider-Man. But as he grew older, some producers were concerned about casting him for more mature roles. 
Despite his challenges in Hollywood, he was busy outside the industry, hosting some illegal poker games. According to Houston Curtis, McGuire was the mastermind behind the famous poker game operation in Hollywood, involving Ben Affleck, Leonardo DiCaprio, and Matt Damon, which inspired the movie Molly's Game. According to Curtis, who was involved in the operations, the poker game was hosted in a downstairs room at a famous nightclub in Los Angeles, and that McGuire allegedly enlisted Leonardo DiCaprio to lure rich people who wanted to play poker with celebrities at the cost of maybe losing some money in the poker games. In his book, it was estimated that McGuire could have made up to 30 to 40 million dollars from these games. To give an idea of how much money were involved in these games, famous UFC commentator Bruce Buffer mentioned in an interview on Impulsive about the buy-ins at some of these poker games. So at this one game, which was a home game, they said, oh, we're going to change it now. You can buy in for whatever you want. So Toby buys in for $200,000. Oh my God. A very famous actor buys in for $75,000. Um, Joe Francis from Girls Gone Wild was there. He bought in for $75,000. I only brought ten grand with me, right? 